We are doing this program called Context Matters primarily because we believe that everything that the government does or every happening has a context. And over the last so many years as a print journalist, I have begun to understand that if you don't know the context, you will never really know why certain things are happening. And what is a good time to understand the outcome of an election is the budget. The budget which was unveiled by uh, Finance Minister of India, Nirmala Sitaraman, the seventh time, probably the maximum times uh, any finance minister has uh, presented the budget after Muraji Desai years ago, has been Nirmala Sitaraman. If you look at the way the budget has been made, it is uh, some total of many pressures and also the way the people voted against this government or for it for that matter. And there is a visible change in the way the BJP has uh, put together the budget. Firstly and foremost, there has been a great amount of space that has been given to the issue of jobs. For somebody, for the trivia minded, there have been 34 occasions in which the word jobs was stated in the budget. And uh, there is a charge by the Congress party that many of the ideas that were there in the budget have been stolen from their manifesto. Because if you remember, the BJP did not come out with the manifesto. They had something called Modi ki guarantee. The real manifesto came from the, from the Congress party. And they were the ones who were providing ideas about internship and many things that in a certain way, um, you know, try to show that they will provide an alternative future for the young people who were agitating over whether they will get jobs or not. They were also provided hope. So here in this case, when it comes to the BJP government or the NDA government, they have provided a vision of how they want to provide jobs to the young and they would be in the nature of internship. The biggest charge that has been leveled against this budget is that jobs are not being provided. There is no solution. There is a promise of internship, but no jobs. There are about a considerable amount of internship that has been created, which will be uh, of young people who will find some space in 500 large companies, but there's no guarantee what they will do thereafter. It is in some ways the same thing. The Agnivirs who will be without job after four years, the same thing is likely to happen in this case also. So what is that the BJP has provided? Some hope for the future, but not entirely. The most significant issue, as I stated earlier, pertains to the support that the BJP has been able to get to form the government. They got, if you remember, just about 240 odd seats and they needed support to form the government to somehow reach to 290 or in excess of 271 seats that are required to form the government. And they managed to get support from TDP, the Andhra party, and also the JDU, which is the Bihar party. Both of them wanted a special status. So in this case, the TDP has got 15,000 crores to build it, uh, the, uh, the capital Amravati and the Bihar has got 59,000 crores, which is a provision for doing many, many things. So the manner in which the money has been allocated has created a great amount of ferment in the parliament. If you have an ear to the TV where the parliament session is being relayed, you'll get to know how much noise is emanating. People are agitating. They don't know whether this budget is for everybody, though surely it is for Andhraids and the Biharis, but not for everybody. Like for instance, even uh, in the state of Odisha, uh, which was uh, in certain ways supportive of the BJP all these years, is very angry over how their claims have been ignored. Or for that matter, even Assam, which is BJP rule state, which claims to have a double engine uh, government, that has also been ignored. So we have a very grim situation where you have large part of the country claiming that their interests have not been looked after. Whereas two states are celebrating, both Bihar as well as uh, Andhra Pradesh for whatever they've got in, this, uh, in uh, this deal. They think that by providing support to the government to remain in power, they've got what they were looking for. But at what expense? That is what we have to find out. As a print journalist, I can safely say that in the last so many years, I have been able to understand the functioning of the government primarily through the pressure groups, the lobbyists and many things that actually drive it. And this is a very unusual occasion. We have a government which is no longer a majority. It is a government which is actually leaning very heavily on two political parties. And secondly, 
This is also the first budget after an election where the BJP, which was ruling the country for the last 10 years, got severely mauled. As a print journalist, I traveled all over the country and to areas which were seen to be strongholds of the Congress of the BJP. And there I realized that there was so much of anger, this seething rage amongst the young. They thought that this government was not fit enough to provide jobs. So did it all reflect itself in the budget that was declared or unveiled yesterday? The Congress uh, expectedly is uh, uh, rather angry but also happy over expected torment uh, that has visited the BJP. Uh, they think that uh, the, the support that they have given to TDP and uh, the Bihar, the, the budget, will cause great amount of fissure and anxieties in other states. Everybody has his eyes on Maharashtra and the state of Haryana where the elections are due in the next two, three months. And that is where I think uh, bulk of the pressure is going to build up. They, these states, the claims of these states have been largely ignored. And that is really going to cause a great amount of distress for the BJP when the elections are held. Similarly, uh, you have uh, the other charges which are being labeled against uh, the BJP government. Firstly, it's a government which is averse to using data. They haven't uh, allowed the updation of data since 2011. They have made a budget which is totally not in sync or aligned with the data which, is, uh, which would show them exactly how many are poor or how many need support. And that is why a lot of things can go wrong. I'll give you an example. They have made provision for uh, 80 crore people to be to be fed uh, every time uh, you know you they distribute rations but these are old numbers there is no updation whatsoever similarly in the area of health they, they wanted to provide support to the health sector despite a promise that they made in the uh, parliament election that they would provide a cover for uh, nearly all people above the 70 years or 70 years of age there's no clarity whether they're doing it they i don't think they do it because they don't have the numbers on every count, this government is falling short in terms of providing exactly how many people are beneficiaries and how many people aren't. And that is a real failing of the BJP government. The last point I want to make is that this government uh, provided ample evidence that they would be in some ways uh, coursing up with China. This is rather strange because uh, after the Galwan skirmish that took place in 2020, in June of 2020 between Indian and Chinese soldiers in which 20 of our Jawans and officers were killed there was a cooling off of relationship and now we hear especially after the reading of the economic survey that the Chinese are very important in some ways because their investments we are, it has to be aligned with ours the FDI uh, uh, structure has to be aligned so that we can benefit from their uh, you know uh, industrial uh, arrangements so in a certain way, this is one fact which has begun to manifest itself in the way the budgetary proposals have been brought in. There is, a, as you would see, a, a fall in the number, the duty of the electronics item. So who benefits most when such a thing happens? Is obviously the Chinese with all the goods that they can bring in. And there is more likely to come in. There's also the Russian factor, which is not really visible, but one has to see it together with the recent trip of Prime Minister Modi to Russia and the beer hug that he gave to Putin. There is a roadmap which I'm sure has been put together of all the money which will be coming in from Russia to be invested in Indian companies. There is so much more. So in my reckoning, if you want to get a better sense of the budget, you should know the context. If you don't know the context, you'll just read it from the point of economist and you will not benefit at all.